live in a digital world, so why is riding the bus still so mundane? Well, with the brand new MyStop mobile app, it doesn't have to be. With real-time bus arrival passenger notification technology, you can know exactly when the bus will arrive at your stop. No more waiting around. And when it gets there, mobile ticketing through Token Transit makes boarding quick and painless. The MyStop mobile app and MCAT, helping you on your journey.
All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome. Today is Tuesday, August 1st, 2023, and I'm welcoming you to a work session, special work session, of the Board of County Commissioners of Manatee County. It is an absolutely beautiful day today in Manatee County, and we're going to start off in our typical fashion. We're going to start this meeting by honoring God and by honoring this great nation. So today, to deliver the invocation, we have Joy Irwin Shatekoff. Shatekoff? Stackliff, I apologize. Joy Irwin Stackliff. I, I gave it a lot of effort. She is from High Flight, the High Flight Foundation. And we also have Steve Romero to give the Pledge of Allegiance. Steve Romero works in our property management division, and he's also a retired United States Navy Chief Petty Officer. He was in the Navy and Marine, he had received a Navy and Marine Corps Commendation Medal, Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medal. Two Sea Service Deployment Medals, Overseas Service Medal, Global War on Terrorism Medal, Four Armed Services Reserve Medal, uh, Expert Rifle and Pistol Medal, Materius uh, Unit Commendation, and Command Battle E Medal. Four Overseas Mobilizations, one Stateside Mobilization, 2007-2008. He was in Bahrain another place that I cannot pronounce, in the United Arab Emirates. Uh, and he served our nation for 15 and a half years. And he'll be leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. So at this time, if you're able, please stand. Okay, thank you for this special opportunity to be with you. County commissioners, I appreciate the invitation. Um, I'm just gonna honor God, um, but just since we have such a distinguished man that I'm standing beside here, I just wanna honor my father too, who was an Apollo 15 astronaut who landed on the moon. Yeah. And here, yeah, we have a moon rock that went right over here at the, uh, Mo yeah, right over here at South Florida Museum. So I am just really grateful to be with you. This is really a special day as I hear all the things that you're doing and then what you're discussing. So <laughs> we need God's help in all things. So um, with that, Father God, I just thank you that, um, that our county commissioner has asked to honor you first because we need wisdom. And these who have come to serve the people here, Father, to represent justice and righteousness in the land that all people would be taken care of. Father, we ask that you would impart your wisdom from above that is beyond them, Father, because they need it, Father. Every decision they make, I'm asking and inviting you in so that you will help them to do what is right and just, Father, for all peoples in Manatee County. So I bless them. I thank you for their families. Father, I ask that you would bless their families, that they would feel your closeness to them and your protection. We thank you for the people that are in Manatee County, and we ask that you would send a special blessing for them as well, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, thank you, Stephen. Thank you so much for your service to this country as well as to our county. And Joy, thank you for the beautiful prayer. And what an appropriate name. All right, we're going to move to our first order of business, which is a sort of a special, unique order of business to start off a meeting or a workshop. Uh, we're going to go to the county attorney for the swearing in of our new county commissioner for District 5, uh, who will be Ray Turner, who was recently appointed by Governor Ron DeSantis. Mr. Clegg? Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I am County Attorney Bill Clegg, and it is my honor and pleasure to ask Mr. Turner and his company 
to join us here at the podium for his oath of office. So if you would all come down, please, and the best place for you to stand again would be here, and then you should be just right here and kind of facing her. So whenever you're ready, you may administer the oath, ma'am. Okay. Raise your right hand. <laughs> I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear, swear that I will support. That I will support. Protect and defend. Protect and defend. The Constitution and government. The Constitution and government of the United States. Of the United States. And the state of Florida. And the state of Florida. That I am duly qualified. That I am duly qualified to hold under to hold office under the Constitution of the state. To hold office under the Constitution of the state. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. Perform the duties of. Perform the duties of. Manatee County Board. Manatee County Board. Of Commissioners District Five. Of Commissioners District Five. On which I am now about to enter. On which I am now about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Very well done. That was perfect. So. Mr. Chairman, that concludes our first matter of business, so I understand you'd like to take a brief recess. Yes, you, uh, you're you all business there. Appreciate you doing that so quickly. We're going to take a 15-minute recess all to right. allow us to arrange the dais appropriately, allow for some photographs, and allow for Commissioner Turner uh, to speak to the press if he so chooses. So we're going to recess for 15 minutes.
Testing, testing. Good. Start. Ladies and gentlemen, we're present to uh, Commissioner Ray Turner, members of the media. Thank you, thank you. First of all, I'd like to say that I'm honored that Governor DeSantis appointed me for this position. I'm really excited. You know, District 5 is one of the most desirable areas in the whole country to live, so I take that responsibility really uh, serious. Lived there 20 years. It served uh, myself and our family really well. Um, looking forward to getting up to speed. So after spending some time on the Planning Commission, what I realize is no leader can do it by themselves. And we have a great team behind us. The staff is amazing. So my acclimation will be a lot shorter due to the staff where I can get up to speed on what the constituents' concerns are, what's on the table, all that kind of thing. So if you've got any other questions. What are some of the constituent concerns? Well, that's what the acclamation is. I don't know yet. <laughs> I'll let you know. What do you know. have uh, in plans, or what do you want to accomplish as a commissioner? Well, first of all, sir, the, the, the first thing is to serve the community, serve the residents the best way I can. That's number one. I know. Maybe I'm crazy. No, no, I'm in a I'm in an age group now where you can see, you know, I'd like to be stand stand up and be counted for. And so, you know, I'd like to contribute back to the community that served me so well. Um, you know, you, you get to a point where you can't wait for other people to do it. You gotta do it yourself. So that was kind of the the big move. Any other questions? No, yeah, it was, uh, it, it's uh, exciting. It's a, it's, it's a bigger deal than what I realized, actually, when you're standing here. Yeah. Are you being tough enough to do this job? It's a, it's a tough job. It is. Look at me. Do I look weak? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anything else? I guess we're going to end it on. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you.
All right, welcome back, everyone. We are now a full board. Uh, well, <laughs> Commissioner Ballard will be here any moment, and then we'll be a f here. We are. We're now a full board, and Commissioner Cruz. Um, and uh, welcome, Commissioner Turner. Uh, we have two guests that are here today who would like to be able to come up to uh, address the board regarding Commissioner Turner swearing in. We have Tara Poulton, who is now the field director for Congressman Vern Buchanan's office, and, and he's up in D.C., uh, I'm sure, fighting the good fight up there, trying to get to the bottom of, of all the, the Biden family of corruption nonsense. Uh, so but she came here today to represent him and to read a letter welcoming Commissioner Turner. Ma'am? Thank you. Good morning, commissioners, and congratulations, Commissioner Turner. I am here representing Congressman Vern Buchanan this morning. Um, he sends his regards, and he has a letter that I would like to read to you today, uh, dated on today's date, August 1st, 2023. Dear Commissioner Turner, please accept my congratulations on your swearing in. Your willingness to step forward and serve District 5 in Manatee County during these challenging times is appreciated and will not go unnoticed. I know firsthand the amount of energy and time it takes to hold public office. Thank you for your service to our community, and I look forward to working with you. Please do not hesitate to contact me, or me, if I can be of any assistance in any federal matters. Sincerely, Vern Buchanan, Member of Congress. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. You can leave that with Q, and she'll see that the commissioner gets it. Thanks so much for coming down, Tara. And we also have the Mayor of Bradenton, Mayor Jean Brown, would like to make a statement as well, sir. Good morning, Commissioners. Thank you, Chairman, and, and welcome, Mr. Turner. I mean, you and I got to meet a little bit yesterday at our joint meeting we had with the school board, the city, and the county, talk for a few minutes. So I um, just want to congratulate you and, and welcome you. And obviously, we've seen as of yesterday and about a year ago, we had another joint meeting that hadn't happened in over 20 years in our city, in our county, because we are one. You know, when you look at it, we're all one and working together. So I appreciate what this board's done, and I look forward to working with you through our council and our administration. So congratulations and welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, are there any board members who'd like to make a statement before we move into the rest of the trash on the agenda today? <laughs> you like that? I was waiting to pass yes, that Mr. in. Mr. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Uh, Commissioner Ron. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'd also like to welcome Murray. Uh, I've known Ray for a long time. Um, he was a great asset to us on the Planning Commission, so he'll be missed there. But uh, welcome aboard. Thank you for being here. Thank you for stepping up and serving. And we look forward to uh, all the great things you're going to do for District 5. So thank you, sir. Commissioner Satcher. Yeah, just short and sweet. Congratulations and uh, welcome to the board. It's just great, great to have you. Looking forward to good things ahead. Should we just go all the way around the horn here? All right, Commissioner Bearden. Congratulations, Ray. Looking forward to working with you here in the next few years. Um, and uh, it's, it's just going to be awesome, and it's going to be an honor to work with you. It's, it's not an easy job, but I know it's, it's going to be a lot easier with you on the board. So I appreciate you um, taking charge and carrying out the plan of the day, as I like to say. Yes, sir. Commissioner Cruz. That's actually what, what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, congratulations, Ray. It's, it's great to have you up here. And uh, as, as Commissioner Ron just mentioned, as I was going to say, our, our neighborhood is very well represented <laughs> on this very diverse board. Uh, so, you know, I, I think we're going we're gonna to be doing well in Greyhawk. But, uh, but congratulations. I look forward to working with you. A lot of fun in the Greyhawk. <laughs> Commissioner Ballard. Congratulations, Ray. Looking forward to working with you. And I know that you'll do a lot of great things for Lakewood Ranch. All right, and yes, sir. Congratulations, Commissioner Turner. Um, glad to have you on board. We had a couple of we had a bre good breakfast and a couple of good conversations in the last couple of weeks. And um, you know, I, I meant all the things that I said during those during those conversations. That uh, what the board needs more than anything is cohesion and togetherness, so that we can move forward as the seven strong conservatives that we are and and uh, bring great things to Manatee County. And we've started a lot of great things. This board has, and we just need to see most of them through at this point. So, and I'm really looking forward to that going forward. All right, let's get down to business. Uh, item number one is an administrator item. Uh, excuse me, item number one was the swearing in of, of Mr. Turner. Item number two is utilities, presentation on solid waste. Uh, so, boy, throwing you right into the fire, Ray, this is Evan Pilachowski. There'll be a quiz in about five minutes on that name, uh, who is our head of utilities, sir? Uh, good morning, commissioners, and congratulations, Commissioner Turner. Uh, good morning. Uh, Mr. Paul and uh, Mr. Clegg. 
I uh, have with me Chris Collins. He's our deputy director for solid waste. And we do have, if you could, uh, three topics that we want to cover today. Really, the goal from today is we want to make sure that we get as much input from you all. Any questions, comments that you may have on any of these topics will help us to really understand your vision to make sure that when we bring these items back to you for a vote, that it really is in line with what you want to see us do in utilities. So the first, uh, the first item is the new RFP for hauler services. Just as a reminder, this is a, the existing franchise hauler agreement that we have in place. Uh, the contract ran from 20, uh, I'm sorry, 2008 to 2023. It has been extended for two years. Uh, and you can see on this slide that we have two existing service areas. So there's the, the roughly the north uh, and the south part of the county right now. Next. So the existing level of service that's included in those contracts is, is outlined here. I know that you're all familiar with this already. We've had a lot of conversations about solid waste over the last several months. Uh, but just for anybody who might be watching, uh, currently we have garbage and bulk uh, twice per week. And then we have recycling and yard waste once a week, also known as a 211 uh, in the industry. And then we also have commercial garbage services. So next. So the, this here is the procurement timeline. So right now, uh, the two-year extension that has been agreed to will start on October 1st, and that's going to run for the next two years. In parallel with that two-year extension, we're going to be looking to get the future contract in place. And you'll see that we have a bit of a tight timeline already. So we are hoping to get the new RFP out on the street by November of this year. So in order to do that, we really need to get your input to make sure that we understand what you all need in this RFP to carry out your vision. So within the next month or two, we really want to nail down what you want in that, that procurement. The other thing I want to point out on this, this timeline is the 14-month period that runs from the point that the new contract is signed until it takes effect. That 14-month period is really critical to ensure that the new waste hauler contract is successful. So that, that's the, the transition period for any new haulers in that subsequent contract. That allows for ordering vehicles, distributing and ordering uh, any carts that might need to be uh, sent out. Really important is communicating with the public. So if the level of service or the services change within that future contract, we really need to be able to message that uh, and, and really get that word out there so people understand what to expect when we get to a new service contract. Uh, based on the input that we have in the industry standard, that 14-month period sounds like a really long time, but it will go quickly, especially as we look at a, lo a lot of uh, public communication and any sort of hiring and training that the new haulers might need to do so that come day one, they are ready to provide the level of service and the quality of service that residents of Manatee County have come to expect. So th this is a lot of the same information that we've, we've talked about. Uh, and actually, I'm going to skip right ahead to the, to the next slide, which has more detail on these same topics. So I know it's a little small, but there are five points of interest in the RFP that we, in particular, want to get input from you all uh, today, if possible. The first is the service areas. So as we showed in the previous slide, there are two existing service areas. Um, these service areas have, have really been well thought out. There is uh, some, some advantage to continuing with two service areas, but you do have the option of considering additional service areas. Uh, so we could either keep two and realign them or add additional. Uh, the, the potential downside is if there's any change in the service areas, that does take a considerable amount of time to make sure it's done right. So there's a right balance of commercial and residential as well as just the, the density of service so that we have good uh, balance in those service areas and we can get good bids across the board. Uh, so I'm going to pause actually at each one of these just to make sure that 
I get any questions or comments on these topics. All right, do we have any questions up to this point for Mr. Pilichowski? All right. All right. You're doing a fabulous job. You can carry on. All right. Uh, the next topic is recyclables processing, and this gets a little, little complicated. Uh, the existing contract has recyclables processing included in the waste hauler contract. So they are responsible for collecting the recyclables and also making sure that it is uh, sorted and uh, sold on the market. There are some advantages to that, just limited number of contracts, but um, we do have some concerns because that does hide, not so, there's greater transparency if there is a, a, a separate contract. So the alternative would be to have just this, this uh, franchise holler agreement cover those services and then have a separate agreement for the recyclable, recyclables processing. The second really big advantage of doing the two contracts is the availability of, of bidders. So there's not as many potential bidders that could cover both scopes of service so that I believe that we are gonna get a much more competitive bid for the waste hauler services by taking that uh, recyclables processing out of that contract. I'm, I'm gonna chime in, that makes sense and I, and I like that. I, I also am assuming that when we approach the, the countywide bid for recycling, that we'll be able to include municipalities into that bid as well because you, know, you have the city of, it's, it's become so expensive you know, that you have an example like the city of Bradenton, uh, that it's just become so cost prohibitive that they're not able to continue recycling. And, and I've talked to the, the mayor in Palmetto, and it's coming for them. They just haven't reached the end of their agreements yet. Um, so all these other smaller municipalities are ultimately going to have in the same position. Uh, so it, it makes sense if we, can, if we can bring them into the fold. I'm assuming that, you know, the, the larger amount of bulk that you have, that the price is going to come down. Yeah, and I'm, I'm looking back at uh, Jacob Erickson, our, our procurement official, just to make sure that that's, uh, that is possible. So uh, we will certainly do that going forward. Okay, I'm, I'm sure that's why the mayor is still sitting here. Uh, he, I don't know if he's really wanting to watch, you know, Ray's whole first meeting. I, th I think he's more interested in recycling. So, all right, thank you. All right, the, the next is the frequency question. So the current service is twice a week for garbage. The alternative for that would be to shift to a once a week for garbage. Uh, there are some advantages, obviously, uh, for the, the twice a week or the once a week. Uh, the once a week does allow us to have a, a lower price for, for customers, but more importantly, it allows to align services so that garbage pickup, recycling, and yard waste can all happen on the same day so that you don't have various services out on the street, f potentially up to four days a week that, uh, that occurs today. So being able to consolidate that and limit truck traffic throughout the neighborhoods, fewer trucks with the 111 service, uh, there's environmental benefits, there's less wear and tear on our roads, and there's just less truck, truck traffic in the neighborhoods. Okay, Commissioner Ron. Hey, Evan, real quick on the 111, Ev, I mean, I think it's a great idea. I mean, we'll go to the bigger cans on the garbage side. We'll, we'll retain the same big blue bins for recycling. And then the yard waste. Um, doesn't the yard waste, though, expand a little bit for the bulk pickup of the yard waste to where instead of going, I mean, they can have more there than they would on a, when we were doing a 2 one one And also, um, have we got any feedback from the, the citizens on the one 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 I know I've quizzed people in my district. Some are for, some are against. But I think... You know, everybody agrees that change is coming with this type of stuff, and you know, it, it'll, it'll, everybody will, it will get it done. But uh, have we got any feedback from any of the citizens or anything on that? So we haven't done any sort of formal uh, survey on the the difference and the preference between the two. Uh, anecdotally, the the information that we have gotten back is is mostly that what we've heard is that there hasn't been that much of a concern going to a one one one. And then the 111 also, that would be completely automated too with the new cans that would come. And are the citizens, the new, newer, bigger trash can, uh, garbage cans, are the citizens going to absorb that cost or is that something we're going to absorb as we go replace by zone by zone? We'll, we'll absorb that cost on those cans. So the, the way that we envision it 
going forward would be to purchase the carts, provide those to residents, uh, and then of course those costs would have to be um, spread across the, the bill. So it, we would recover those costs in the, the monthly fee that we charge. But they would not be re responsible for purchasing the new cart out of their pocket. Um, yeah. And I, I will say that the, the carts that um, we, we've been looking at are very, uh, they have a much longer lifespan than the one you may find at a, a big box store that right now people who go out to purchase a, a, a cart may, uh, may have to replace that on a regular basis. These carts that we're looking at would have more of a 10 to 15 year lifespan. All right, thanks. Thank you. Thank and you, sir. Commissioner Bearden. Oh. Okay, Commissioner Bearden. Is there something, let's just say, like, I don't know, we, we start off with the 1-1-1 one, 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 um, option, but for some reason it doesn't work out for us. You know, we get phone calls, whatever, it's just not working. Is there an ability to change that to the two times a week, That a possibility of, of being able to change that to two times a week if, if we have to make a shift? Uh, with that option in there is what I'm asking. I, honestly, I'd want to talk to the procurement official and the county attorney's office on, on any sort of major change like that to uh, the scope of service within a contract of what might be possible. Uh, it might be possible to do a change order. Um, I wouldn't want to, to speculate before we had uh, more in-depth conversations about what might be possible there. My own thing is, is if we do this for two years or three years and it doesn't happen to work out the way that we planned it to work out, um, based on, you know, the accumulation of certain trash. I, I want to have something, some sort of flexibility if, if we have to make that shift, just for future reference. We will look into that before we bring this back to the board for a final decision. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, I'm next on the board, then Satcher, and then I believe Turner is trying to get on the board. Um, so... One question there. Well, well, you're third on the on the speaking oh, order, there, sir. That's all right. We'll get you there. I'm new, sir. You you are you are. Uh, um, so if we do if we go with one time you know one time a week pickup one one one, and you may have said this and I missed it. Um, garbage recycling and yard waste, everything would fall on the same day for a customer, right? Because that was correct. that was probably my favorite part of that. Yes. Was that, you know, I only have to remember. One day at this point, like if I miss Wednesdays, man, I'm in trouble. Um, okay, I, I like that about it. And I don't see on here a uh, collection of commercial at night, which I am a very strong advocate of. Uh, and I've heard some, uh, put, I've received some pushback on that from staff. Uh, I don't personally feel like staff is trying hard enough to make that work and make that happen. So I'm just gonna reiterate again that I feel that commercial being picked up at night is, is it, and maybe I'm the only one. Maybe I'm just shouting into an empty room here. Um, it's happened before. Um, but uh, I think that there's benefits to it. Commercial being picked up at night, I think we're getting you know, s big, slow-moving vehicles off of our main arteries, because that's where most of our commercial is, that are pulling on and off and constantly in and out of traffic. Um, I think it's going to help us with traffic tremendously. Uh, and I think it's going to enable, to to some extent, certainly it's going to have to enable, because we're all top-load vehicles if we're going automated at this point, no rear, rear loads. Uh, if we do one one one, so then it's going to enable the, the you know to be able to use the same vehicle at night and then again during the day, and I think it's going to lessen the amount of equipment that's going to have to be purchased right out of the gate. And maybe I'm wrong on all these points, but uh, this is you know this is the way I see it. So, what do you have to say about that, sir? We will look into that more before we bring it back to the board for a, a final decision. Okay, thank you, um, Commissioner Satcher, and then Commissioner Turner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, for I mean. We see the lay of the land. It's headed to, seems like, once a week um, pickup. For those that are, say, they're filling up their cans twice a week, or they've got, you know, they're normally putting bags beside the cans, you know, which, of course, there's a person there to just grab those and throw them in now. Um, so it'll be quite a change for some, you know, families or some businesses. Um, is there a chance, would it be, this be the time to talk about um, to where if that, somebody knows up front, I'm going to be needing two cans, um, to where we could work that into this whole deal? Are we going to kind of triple hit people? Like, first of all, we're not picking up twice. Second of all, 
you know, we're, you can't put a bag beside and, you know, and then third of all, you got more than fits in one can, pay me a hundred bucks. Plus I'm using, plus I'm raising your overall rate. Are we just gonna, you know, body blow, you know, a year from now to every, or can we make a plan that could make it part of the overall contract that someone could get two cans up front? We can certainly do that. And in addition, we can look at uh, larger cans. So if somebody does not want a 64 gallon because that's not going to be enough for them, we can look at a, a, a 95 gallon. Um, but the, there is the potential of building that into the, the bid to have a, a second pickup price as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Turner. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, I mean, obviously I'm new to this, but I'm looking at it with the 111. Um, and then I think everybody seems to be on the same page as far as let's flush this out as, as much as possible. My concern with having a contingency of moving it to something else, like a two, would be the whole cost would be massive. So I don't think that's a contingency that we can build into this. What's your thought? I, I believe you're you're correct that if if we build that into the contract uh, and the bid up front, we we may get some uh, manipulation of, of pricing. That uh, if it were allowed uh, per a change order, we would have to negotiate that in in good faith with them. Right, and cost being so prohibitive right now. Mm -hmm. I think we just lose leverage trying to do that. So if we can vet it out as much as possible <coughs> on the front side, we know that all our concerns are with our constituents are uh, covered would be the best way to negotiate. Would that be right? Uh, I full full agreement, sir. Okay. I'm going to throw one more thing in there. When I when I was uh, running for office for this office, the only office I ever ran for, um, I was at one of these meetings and it was sort of like this. I think there were two people in the audience and the board got into a discussion about the fact that um, our that, that our landfill is open and that we collect trash on Martin Luther King Day. And there was a commissioner who wanted to be closed on Martin Luther King Day, but the landfill was open. And so as the, the agreement says that when the landfill is open, they have to collect. And the attorney was worried that you start to open this up. It's a big contract and didn't want to get into the weeds on it. Uh, and I know this is just sort of a small item, um, but... He's, he's like one of my favorite Americans, and, and so I'm pretty knowledgeable on Martin Luther King. And uh, one of the facts about his death is that he was in Memphis advocating for solid for, for waste collecting, for, for solid waste collection workers. That's actually literally what he was doing when he when he died. And you know, people who are at banks and people in this building and all these other people have Martin Luther King Day off. But the people who are collecting the garbage that he literally died trying to protect you know, and defend uh, didn't have the day off. And it just seemed pretty hypocritical and ironic to me. Um, is it, I don't know if there's any objection from the board, but I, I would like to ensure that in the next contract that it is worked in there that not just are we not collecting, but I want to ensure the landfill is closed going forward on Martin Luther King Day as well. The, if other municipalities want to collect, they can, but, but you know, they're not going to be able to drop it off at our place. So is that something that's doable? We can absolutely include that in the new contract, and we can also speak with our existing waste haulers to see if that's a, a possibility that we could negotiate in good faith for no cost. Does any board member have an issue or object to that at all? Not at all. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Evan. Thank uh, you. No one else is on the board, sir. All right. So bulk item pickup, I think, is our, our next topic. So right now, there is unlimited bulk item pickup that is included in the monthly fee that uh, people pay for their, their solid waste services. Uh, the alternative to that would be an on-call on system so that if somebody has a refrigerator or a couch to pick up, they would call a number, arrange for the pickup, and establish we would establish a user pay system so that those costs are directed to the people who are using the service and not necessarily spread across the entire population who may not be using the service. Sure. Hey, Evan, what would, is, it, is it the bulk cost going to be based on um, the, what they're picking up, or is it going to be just a flat fee, 100 bucks? we'll pick up whatever. We'll, you know, we'll pick up refrigerators, couches, furniture, whatever it's going to be, so it's going to be a flat fee, or is it going to be some type of tiered process? We would look to our, our consultant to help us establish that system based on the experience of other counties and, and municipalities. Um, I don't know right now whether it would be a flat fee or if there would be maybe a sliding tier based on size or weight. 
but whatever it may be, it, that's going to be baked into the RFP and the, the pricing that we receive so that um, if there's a desire for it to be a flat fee by the board, you know, we can, we can try to implement it that way. Or if you want to see a tier, we can see if that would be appropriate as well. So on the, on the bulk call, um, when a person calls in and says, hey, I got a couch to pick up, is it, that's just going to be any day of the week, any time that's ready or whatever, um, or is it going to be on the same day that they had to do the one, one, one or whatever. So it'd be on that day still. It's just done. I, hey, I, I move my. I just move my refrigerator down the curb. Can you come get it? How's Correct. That work? Correct. So when the call goes in, uh, that would then be scheduled based on the the next available uh, bulk pickup round. So that would be communicated to the resident to say, make sure to have your couch out on such and such a day. It would be, I believe, one day per week where it would be available in each neighborhood. Uh, but it would not. Um, we'd make sure that the conditions in the contract require it to be picked up within a certain number of days. Thank you. Sir, my, my commissioner, my only concern about the, the flat fee would be what, what Evan has found and, and Courtney have found is that um, there's only a tiny percentage, like one or 2% of prop parcels that are utilizing the free bulk. And it's like the same people, yeah. right? And they're, it's, it's typically slumlords and, and they're putting like a huge amount out. And so what worries me is that if we do a flat fee, then the person who's only putting like one couch out every once in a while, that fee that you're charging for everybody, they're going to ultimately end up subsidizing sort of what we're trying to get out of now is everybody subsidizing these small number of, of property owners. Two dollars for that. Oh, yes, sir. I have no problem with either. Um, what's ever best for the citizens, I, I really don't care which way we go. Okay. It's just going to be a board decision on how we do that. So okay. I agree um, with you. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Commissioner Ballard. So I, I know that <coughs> don't we have a, a, a once a year, like large pickup right That's now? Yeah. So how I, I, I don't really under, so it says bulk unlimited with garbage and then it would be bulk on call. How does that? How does that differ? So, yes, it's a good question. So right now there is a one free annual that right. is in our contracts up to, I believe, 60 cubic yards. Which is uh, huge. It's it, enormous. Um, the bulk item pickup is item by item. Okay. So that would just be an individual uh, couch or, or whatever it may be. The, the one free annual is more if um, somebody is cleaning out an entire apartment. Okay. And just throwing everything out or doing renovations and uh, getting rid of everything from, from that, that structure. I understand. So would it be possible to include just the bulk items, like regular people who are getting rid of a couch or something like that, and then change the annual to a, an on-call? Absolutely. Do you have any idea what the expense would look like for that? Uh, off the top of my head, I, I know we had those numbers. Um, I don't know that was, we had those at our fingertips. It was $30 an item. But I did want to, can I offer a point of clarification for a moment? And I think you did a good job kind of dividing, splitting them. But um, the, the data that you provided, Chairman, is um, for that one-time annual. Right. And so the one-time annual, and, and just the one-time annual would be, as, as um, Evan stated, you know, <coughs> dumping, basically dropping off a dumpster, a 60 cubic yard dumpster for someone to dump all of their stuff in once a year. And what we were seeing is people would call those in for their neighbors and, you know, and, and use all of those over and over again. So um, that's one. And I think that would be sort of in the hundreds of dollars is what I think it came up to last, yeah. last time we did this. Um, we saw those numbers. With the bulk pickup, though, the bulk pickup is just like Commissioner Ballard said, dropping off a couch, and that was about thirty dollars a night. I think it went twenty-five to thirty-five dollars, but in that realm per item. The one concern that I think we should bring up, though, is when you do an automated trash collection, if that's the way that the commission wants to go, um, you create a manual pickup for those items, and so that does create a little bit of a if you don't if you don't coordinate those, it's a different type of truck. So it's not quite as easy as we pick up your trash and we'll just grab your couch while we're there. Okay. So if I, so it sounds like 
it would be if we move to the automated pickup, which I think everyone wants to do, it would be it would be prudent to change the bulk pickup to you have to call in and while we're at it, a small fee is possibly appropriate. Okay, thank you. All right. So uh, are they calling in? I'm sorry. So do they call into the county or do they call into the like waste management or whoever it might be? We would have a new work order system in place that we're implementing as we speak that'll be in place when this new contract takes effect. Okay. And basically they would go online, submit it or call in. Mm -hmm. And then that work order would get sent directly to whichever hauler is in that area. Okay. Commissioner Satcher. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I don't, I don't know as far as the you know, software that it might require, how hard it would be to keep up with, but I would love to see one free, not 60 yards, but you know, you got a couch and a TV that you're done with, one free pickup, um, so that people aren't you know, having to deal with that and uh, getting a huge amount. And then if they're calling over and over again, beyond that, then we charge them. So. We, we can certainly look into that. I don't know if that, yeah, if you could, if they could keep up with it, that seems to be real reasonable to me. <laughs> included in the overall rate <laughs> and in the contract, one pickup included in the overall rate would be neat to see, but not not a hill I'm going to die on. Mr. Pilachowski. All right. So the last item on the list here is the method of collection, which has been referenced already. Uh, it's. Currently, we do manual collection. Uh, the alternative is automated connect collection. Uh, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that it goes with the 211 or 111. You can do automated 211 uh, if that was the desire. Uh, the, there, the advantages with automated collection are really across the board. There's a lot of difficulties hiring that second person on a, a garbage truck who would be doing the manual collection. Uh, there's the insurance liability of just having that other person there. Uh, and then it's really the industry standard. You know, as, as we look across other municipalities, other jurisdictions, automated service is, is where the industry is going. Any further questions? Okay. So a quick, quick status report on the extension itself, the two-year extension that's been signed. Um, we are having ongoing discussions with Waste Pro and Waste Management who are going to be continuing to pro provide a service during that period. Uh, the, will, there will be a, a, a necessary change in some collection days. So just based on the last 15 years and how development patterns have, have uh, shifted in the county during that time, we want to work with them to rebalance collection days to make sure that across the board there's approximately the same number of residents who are getting those services each day. Back of the envelope, we're looking at maybe about six, 7,000 people who are going to get a different day for their collection. Uh, so we'll, we'll work with both Waste Pro and Waste Management on messaging for those people, but it will ensure that we have a better quality of service by not overburdening the, the waste collectors on a specific day. So in addition to that, in our conversations with Waste Pro and Waste Management, uh, for the actual extension period and those negotiations that we had, there were a lot of promises made about new equipment, hiring programs, uh, employee retention programs, and how they were proposing to provide a continuing uh, level of service acceptable to the county during this two-year extension. So we're going to be working with them to make sure to track the progress on those pro projects or those, um, those initiatives that they have, as well as just the overall level of service and quality of service that they are providing and providing regular updates to the board. Any last questions on this before we move on to solid waste rates? All right. Moving on. Yeah, what do you want? What do you want from direction before we move on? It's a good point Commissioner Ballard made. Um, let's back it up another slide. 
another slide. Okay. Um, do you want us to go down this list and give you some consensus on each of these each of these items here? If if that is allowed within the work session, that would be ideal. I mean, we can talk. We're here. We can't cast a vote. Nothing's binding. Um, but um, I mean, when it comes to service areas. Does anyone have any comments on the service areas that were shown? Does anybody want to make any changes to those service areas? They're the same existing service areas, right? Yes, sir. So is everyone happy with the current service areas, the map? Okay. I, yeah, I don't have any, any issue with and that. And just to, just a point of clarification, too. So once we get some sort of, I guess I would say there is no vote today, but just some sort of an idea of where, you know, where your heads are at, mm -hmm. we will likely come back one more time, and then we would come back with the contract for your approval, the RFP sure. prior to going out, yeah. which we hope to get out in November of this year. So just to give you an idea of timeline. Okay. So um, so you'll come back in November? November with the, with the draft RFP for, for the board's approval. For the draft. Okay. So, yeah, so we're going to try and give you some solid direction here so you can get work done between now and November when you bring us a draft. So service areas, it sounds like everyone is happy with that. Recycling, essentially Evan says he wants to pull recycling out of this negotiation. He wants to come back and, and negotiate recycling after this fact, right? Or separately from, from solid waste collection. Is recycling my processing. And so to be clear, recycling collection, collection would still happen as part of this contract. Recycling and processing would be sep the proposal is doing it separate. Right now, it's with the collection, and the problem is, is that there's <coughs> there's revenue, not a lot, that's collected that we never see. So if we do it separately, we actually see what those costs are and what the benefits are in a separate contract, and it could it could add to. Well, help know, me understand. I mean, cost. Waste Pro is the only one, the only company that's invested in a, in a recycling MRF. Um, you're going to have, where does waste management take the, recy the recycling now? Because they collect it now. Are they taking it to Waste Pro? Single stream. Yeah, it's a single stream facility. Single stream facility. Yeah. I have no idea. But that's a Greek to it's me. Like all it's in Sarasota. The, all of the recycling goes to one. All of the recycling goes to one place. That's what we're saying. It's a commercial facility in Sarasota. And I think they have a higher capacity. Correct? Okay, does so they're taking... Or I don't mind. You can take all the garbage of ours to Sarasota you want. Um, so that's fine. All right, so they're taking it to Sarasota. Um, so then it sounds like that would sort of basically ultimately continue. Is that cost effective? Or, oh, we're going to bid it out to one. We, the proposal would be to, to bid so it we, out we may and allow others waste, to. We may force waste management or, or the other company, which I don't remember the acronym, um, to bring their... If we decide Waste Pro, let's say we decide it's Waste Pro because they're in Manatee County, just pulling that out of my hat, right? Um, so then Waste Management would have to bring their the recycling that they collect to the Waste Pro facility? That That is the way that would work, yes. Okay. And the city of Bradenton, I'm assuming, would then bring theirs, would just collect and bring theirs to Waste or to whatever facility Correct. as well? Correct. Okay. So. Mr. Commissioner Turner. I'm sorry. Um, I think what Courtney's saying, if we break out the processing piece, it's not a mystery number, right? Yeah. And so regardless of what this, so we, we take that piece out, now it's not a mystery, now we can negotiate. I don't want to see recycling as a moneymaker because, because I've learned a lot in, in my couple years with, with Mitch and with Bethany, but um, right now, you know, when you bring in recycling, the processing of it is, is a savings. Obviously, collection costs money, and so that ends up... It, it, it doesn't end up being a moneymaker, but... It's like transit. You're not going to make money on recycling. You're just trying to control the bleeding as much as possible. And so right. the problem now is any profit or, or revenue that we see is is hidden. We, we, we don't know. It's not separated out. And so the plan is if we were to contract it out separately that those numbers would be knowns now. We would see what we're... What... This helps us with negotiation. Correct. Okay. All right, with after further clarification... Um, is everyone okay with the plan going forward with recycling? Yes. Okay. Separate processing contract. Yes, separate processing contract. Okay. All right, let's get to the fun stuff. Frequency is next on the list. Does anyone object? Because we had multiple people advocate for 111, uh, same day, service for all materials, less environmental impact, less street wear and tear, it encourages recycling, are the perks. Um, 
people don't like change. That's the, the negative. I think we can summarize that in one negative. Um, I'm for 111. I know a few others were. Is there anyone who is objecting to 111? I'm good with 111 as long as we have a really good campaign over the next couple of years to make sure that people are aware of what the changes are going to look like, that they're going to have a, a bigger cart that they're not paying for up front, et cetera. And then I think we had also discussed uh, a second free recycling cart <coughs> upon request. Yes. So just it, make, making free, that known. Nothing's free, as Commissioner well. Bearden pointed out. True, no, true. Nothing is free. Say it's free. A. <laughs> so the, the cart. Opt. Well, the, the carts, well, I mean, nothing's free. Literally, they, you know, the, 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 the taxpayers are paying for this. Um, but the carts will not be a one-time assessed fee. They will right. be distributed over the course of the life of the, the container or whatever. Th that is correct. What for is the life of the container? Uh, 10 to 15 years for these. How much does a container cost? Uh, our price, I believe, is around $100. A little less than $100. So we're down to less than a dollar a month. Yeah. Okay. I can, I can handle that. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So is anyone objecting then to moving forward with 111 as long as uh, Evan and, you know, I'm sure Casey and, you know, all of our communications team are going to have a, a good, positive, get out in front of it when the time is right, um, you know, campaign. And then, of course, the email for any complaints will, will be Evan's email. Um, <laughs> okay. Commissioner Satcher. Oh, no, go ahead. Commissioner Satcher, you're on the board, sir. Yeah, let me go ahead. Yeah, I, I have no objections, just with the caveat um, that Commissioner Ballard alluded to, <coughs> that people can comp or include uh, the cans that they need up front. And I just feel like that's going to, for the complaints that we do receive, for the people that are unhappy, that's going to be so great for us to be able to say, oh, well, you can actually just let us know. We'll put you on the list and we'll bring you an extra can. I know it's once a week, but you're still taken care of. Sure. Um, you know, and it's part of your contract. And just in my head, that's like 75 cents a month for right. a can. Right. Well, if you had two cans, then it's 75 cents times two. It's a buck 50. Buck 50 a month for two cans. And, you know, Not so bad. That's, that's doable. Uh, Commissioner Bearden is on the board. No, so. I just, as I discussed with Evan earlier, I just wanted to see if. Uh, we could put some type of stipulation in, in, in the paperwork in case we ever, if, so, if, if this were happen to blow back on us because people are just so angry, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's and it becomes a massive amount of people because we went to one one. Just maybe something stipulated that a possibility of <laughs> us being able to change based on, you know, certain cost that would increase if we go to. To two, two, because it's after three years, this thing is we've got pitchforks out there and people wanting to burn the building down. Just something in place to, you know, have that shift just in case. Can you can you look into flexi the flexibility options? Flexibility options. Get back to Commissioner yeah. Bearden on that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I, I'm, but I but I am good. Just so you know, I'm good okay. with the one one. Cruz and Ron, Commissioner Cruz. And obviously, this all comes down to the contract. I mean, <laughs> one of these days, maybe we'll say. I mean, we keep having these work sessions here and I think we all keep saying the same thing um at some point we need to make a, de a decision though I mean I understand that the pitchfork thing but I mean there's a cost associated with it and to previous conversations if they think that they're going to be able to potentially get to a, a two and jack our price up we know we're only going to use it if we have pitchforks if I was them not to negotiate on their behalf but they're not idiots that's going to be much more expensive because they know we're only going to do it if we're literally getting threatened with getting thrown out of office and protests in the front. And then we'll pay anything to do it. So it, it, I don't see that being a realist. I think at some point this board just needs to make actual decisions and, and stick with them. Um, otherwise, we would have decided this six months ago and already have a long-term contract in place. Uh, now we just seem like we're re-spinning our wheels with the same options again for a future contract. But again, we need to make a decision. The stipulations are great, but they're expensive. It's what's happening right now. We stipulated we'd rather have another extension instead of a long-term contract, and that's going to come back and cost everybody more money because we stipulated things and gave contingencies. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Ron. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I would like to rip the band-aid off this thing and move this process forward. It's been kicked around long enough. I think you see with the 111, though, I think the citizens will agree that it has less garbage trucks out on the streets. That's what I keep hearing. Let's get these garbage trucks off the street. They're leaking garbage, they're leaking oil, they're leaking gas everywhere and whatnot. So 
I, I think we just we should move forward on the one one one. Is my opinion and negotiate out and let's just go and get it done, rip the bandaid off, like uh, Commissioner Cruz is pretty much saying, and move forward on this. I think those are the city trucks that you're thinking about, there, Commissioner. <laughs> Agreed. Um, Thanks, our guys Steve. are doing a stand-up job. But at least they don't drop recyclables on yeah. the ground. Yeah, there's no recyclables falling on the ground. Um, okay, so on the frequency, uh, the frequency issue, one one one. No one spoke against one one one. Okay, I mean nobody loves it, but but that's where we're at. Um, okay, some people love it, some don't love it. Um, Can I speak to the cans for a moment? If you want to, I mean, we're moving right along, and you're getting everything you want. I don't no, know. I if think I, this is great. You so can only the, screw it up. The, I just wanted to. <laughs> I just want to provide a point of clarification on that too, just so everyone's aware. So, um, and we briefed many of you. Snatching already. defeat so in the jaws I know of victory. Commissioner Turner's new, but um, so the cans. Um, the thought is there's there's a few options, and I don't know if you wanted to get into the weeds today, but um, you can provide another can for garbage. You can provide another can for recycling, um, and so right now. Uh, obviously, everyone has to provide their own cans for their trash collection because it's manual. Yeah. But the recycling cans, if you wanted a second can, you can call in and you can get a second can. I actually just talked to someone recently who just got a second recycling can. And they said for the first time for my family of like six or seven people that I was able to fit everything in my one trash can uh, this week. And so I think the recycling also, we had talked about internally with staff, is to push recycling, which also buys back time on the landfill to comp an additional recycling can and make sure that that's built in, we can also really move forward with our team in pushing recycling, educating the public, and trying to get that initiative moving that, forward. And that was specifically what I was speaking. Mm -hmm. oh, what? Is you're on? Are you on? I should be, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that was specifically one of the things that I was speaking to earlier about the extra recycling can being comped or whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, I, I I personally really agree with that, and I think there are a lot of a lot of upsides to that, and we're already currently doing it, correct? All right. So frequency, we have a consensus. Bulk items. This got sort of convoluted. Evan, do you want to give me a fifteen second, hundred thousand foot view of bulk items? So bulk items, the the on call system would have the customers who call in pay for the specific item that they pick up rather than spread that across and include everybody it in else subsidizes fee. it right Correct. so be like a user fee a couch is like 30 bucks that's what i took out of it Correct. okay uh and then the the bulk is that just a single item but then bulk like bringing in a dumpster or whatnot also a separate user fee you'd have to call in correct okay does anybody have an issue uh, or objection to that plan. No, I have one question. Commissioner Ron has an objection. The so. fee for whatever the fee is going to be, sliding scale, flat, <coughs> is that going to be paid the time they call in to have the pickup, or is it going to be on, just put on their bill and uh, it'll just be on their, their, the utility bill? We could structure that in a couple different ways. I believe when we were looking at the, the full contract, it was going to be billed directly by the, the hauler so that it would be separate from the monthly bill that people have received now. Okay, so they'll just get a separate bill in the mail or online or whatever, and here's what you got to pay us this month if you don't pay us. And, and we'll look into the details on that about what is going to be the most efficient way to make sure that we, we get those bills out to people. And then the question was asked earlier, when they call in, are they going to be calling in, are they going to call in like the 311 and say, hey, I got a bulk pickup, and <coughs> that'll disseminate like stuff does now, or will it be, they're going to call the, the hauler directly and say, hey, can you come get this refrigerator off my front yard? Again, this this we have a little bit of flexibility on with the the new customer information system that we're putting in place, as well as some of the advances in our our billing systems. Uh, I believe we're going to have the ability to maybe even do both, where they could call into the utilities to arrange for that, or the the haulers and the systems at some point in the not too distant future will be integrated so that they're going to be talking to each other. Because I, I, I would like to do is have a little more control over that than the hauler because. All I need is the, the, they call the hauler, hauler it and show it. They, yeah, we'll be there. Yeah, we'll be there. Yeah, we'll be there. And the thing's sitting out there. Now I got a citizen calling me going, I've called these guys four times and nobody's coming to pick up my refrigerator in my front yard. Yes, and that is, that is our concern as well, that we want to make sure that we are aware of any of those calls that go in at the very least so that we can follow up on the, the non-responsive events. Thank you. All right, so we'll use the, uh, the personal cell phones of the at-large commissioners for, for those requests. <laughs> Doesn't typically um, work out that yeah. way. Though. We'll we'll vote on that and see how it works out. <laughs> um, all right, and then method of collection, uh, <coughs> manual or automated? Uh, automated? Is anyone is anyone opposed to automation? 
Okay, Evan, you have pretty good direction here on all of these. Um, Kevin, thank we'll you. We'll see you next week with a draft, right? Okay, uh, so, Jason uh, Bearden. Well, I mean, Bearden. we're talking about the phone calls, right, with Commissioner Ron over here. Um, is there a way to put – we have an app that maybe that can be easier to streamline it through a seller or whatever it might be. That's what we're talking about. So also we, being able to do. We are looking at those those possibilities. We are in the process of rolling out a, a new customer customer information system, which okay. is going to allow for much more self service by by residents, not just for solid waste, but for water and, and wastewater as well. So and we really want to notify quit. the status as it's in the queue. Exactly. We got it. Okay. Awesome. All right. Very good. Uh, Evan, you can move us along then, sir. All right. Uh, now to the, the rate study. So this slide shows the projected uh, expenditures that we have in solid waste for FY23 through FY25. Uh, you can see a, a large jump for FY24 and 25. It's due to three main reasons. And I know the numbers are small, so you may not be able to see it on your screens, but the, the darkest blue, the bottom, column there, that is for the, the extensions. So during the um, two-year process or the two-year extension, the, the rates have, are going to have to be increased in order to cover that. The next column up is stormwater. So the increased stormwater transfer. Uh, solid waste bills is where we pay for stormwater, so that increase in the budget is reflected here in this slide. Uh, and then a one little blip on that next column up in FY24, there's a $4 million capital project that we are proposing to uh, complete with these revenues, uh, not with debt, and that is for a gas expansion system at our uh, current landfill. So it's, it's work that we absolutely need to do. So you can see it jumps up in FY24, but then it comes right back down in FY25. Next, next slide. So. The red columns are the, the takeaway here. Oh, uh, the bill. The, actually, the, the black Please line in the middle. Commission, the, co Commissioner, Commissioner Ron is uh, still learning the technology. Well, the Sorry. presentation won't come up either. It's, every time I try to download it, says try again. Uh, real quick, Evan, can you back a slide? Under the collections, you're saying that the increase in the collection is due to the, just the extension. If we would have gone ahead and f had a contract written, would those fees have been less? I haven't finished the, the, that comparison uh, to include the stormwater fees because we hadn't included that when we were talking about the, the longer term extension. It's going to be really neck and neck. The, the, the fee that the average resident is going to pay in FY24 under this extension versus the other contract, it's approximately equal to each other. Now, the level of service provided during the extension period is what everyone has come to <laughs> expect. So it's continuing on that the two one one uh, service during the, that two year extension. So there's it's a little bit of an apples to oranges comparison. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. So the the blue line on top that is just the expenditures projected expenditures from. The previous slide, the black line is the projected revenues if there is no rate increase. And then each of those red columns at the bottom, that is the, the projected deficit for each of those years. So you can see in FY23, we're already running a deficit, and it, it gets significantly worse in FY24 and 25 if we don't make any change to rates. He, here it's the just a, a total view. Um, won't get into too many of the details. The important column here is the one in yellow. That is our unrestricted surplus. And you can see in FY24 and 25, uh, we go significantly negative. So this is uh, evidence we, we do not have the, the funds within our current um, solid waste fund to, to cover this and uh, be able to proceed without a rate, rate increase. This is uh, a table showing what the projected bills would be for our residents. Uh, the numbers have to be finalized still. I apologize, they're not completely uh, finalized and we'll make sure to get those uh, tightened up before we bring this back to the board. Uh, but for context, I do wanna point out that 
in 2008, we had a monthly uh, waste bill for people of $12.77. In 2015, we had a, a bill of $14.33, and we have maintained that rate since 2015. So we have been very fortunate having some of the lowest solid waste rates across the state. And in, in honesty, seeing how the industry is headed, even during this two-year extension, we still have very competitive rates. Commissioner Ron. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Evan, can you break down for us, uh, with, with our new increase going into 24 and 25, can you break down or can you tell us where we are in comparison with Sarasota, Hillsboro, Pinellas, and our surrounding counties and as far as where we, we're at on that, that scale, where, where we rank on our new fees? So I, I don't have that slide or the, those numbers in, uh, in my back pocket. Uh, it would be pr approximately what we had presented uh, back when we were looking at the full contract uh, in, I believe, March. And during those conversations, it was evident that in the new contract, we would have continued to have very competitive rates uh, across the, the area and across the state. We can polish that, make an update, and make sure that that comes back to the board when uh, you consider a vote on any rate increase. Thank you. Uh, next slide. So this is assuming that the proposed rate increase goes through, as shown on the previous slide. The, you can see that the yellow column uh, goes away. So we're really balancing, and, and it's, it's uh, making sure that we have revenue sufficiency for FY24 and 25. Uh, but you can see we're not building substantial contingencies. So the, the rates are really as low as we can, can set them and maintain that revenue sufficiency to preserve the required contingencies we need in our fund. So at that, I'll, I'll pause for any rate discussion before I move on to landfill siting. I don't have anyone on the board okay. at this time um, for comment. So, I mean, I think we can move forward. I mean, it's math. I mean, I don't know really much much to debate. I would I would like to see if we can get the numbers, because Commissioner Ron posed a really good question, what the surrounding areas are charging. Um, if we could get those numbers, you have your staff try and figure that out while we're here, that would be great. Uh, otherwise, I think you can move on. Okay, we'll, we will certainly bring it back at a, at a later date, and we'll try to get it uh, before, before we're adjourned here today. Commissioner Cruz. Sorry, I had something else up on my screen. Um, yeah, so just to make sure, because this is a, is this a work session? Yeah, so we're not voting on this. You're going to bring this back based upon direction of this board. The real discussion here, because this is our third or fourth work session on garbage collection this calendar year. Um, so I look forward to the September work session on, on solid waste. Um, so... We've already signed this extension, correct? Correct. And we're already starting, what, September 1st, October 1st? We're October going to get 1st. charged for this. So this isn't so much a discussion of what does Pinellas pay or Hillsborough. I, yeah, sure, I'd like to see those numbers. But we're now on the hook for this extension for two years because we opted not to do the long-term contract, which is great because that means we all get to vote on solid waste increases twice um, right now and then again 24 months from now um, when the permanent one comes back. And I'm sure inflation isn't helping that. So this isn't so much really a question. As, as the chair said, this is math. We're paying this. The county is paying this. The question is now, do we go into a massive deficit and default on this, or do we charge people the amount to cover the cost of it? This isn't really up for discussion at this point in time. The only question is, do we charge people for the, the trash that we're picking up, or do we find other sources of funding within the county to make up a shortfall for people? That's really our only discussion. We don't really have that because you're an enterprise fund. So Correct. we'd have to find that money elsewhere, like bonding or borrowing money just to pay for an extension of trash, which clearly doesn't work because you got to pay back those bonds, and then it just makes the next increase that much larger. So this isn't really a question. This is more of a statement. 
and we're just acknowledging the statement that we have to increase these to cover the cost of the extension. Otherwise, we're going to go broke. Correct. Okay. So I'll make sure we're on the same page. All right. Next, uh, we have solid waste disposal. So this is uh, what do we do when Lena Road runs out of capacity? Where do we bring our waste? So for context for some of the future slides, this, this slide shows that the latest report to DEP, we have 17.8 years of remaining capacity. In the updated analysis that we've performed uh, as part of the siting analysis, uh, we've updated those projections and it looks like we have closer to 15 years of remaining capacity, which sounds like a long time, but in the world of building a new landfill, acquiring the property and getting permits, it's, it's not a lot of time. So we're, we're really at a point where we, we need to move forward decisively. Uh, and then this last bullet, you can show, we show that uh, we have existing operation costs at the landfill of about $20 million today. We're, we're uh, escalating those up to about $30 million per year by the end of the projected life of the existing landfill. So those, those numbers will become important as we look at the costs of some of the options further into the slides. So roughly speaking, we have these five options for what do we do with our waste going forward. Uh, the first is, can we add additional capacity at the current Lena Road landfill? The second is a thermal conversion technology. So primarily, it's a waste to energy facility. Uh, and then th options three through five, it's really kind of a matrix of options. It, it comes down to we can build a new, new landfill. It could be in county, out of county. We could do it by ourselves. We could do it in partnership with another public entity, or we could do it in partnership with a private entity. So the first of those options is adding capacity at Lena Road. So our, our consultant has, has crunched the numbers and, and looked at the, at the existing facility. It is currently broken up into three stages. Stages one and three are currently closed, and stage two is where we are doing our filling operations today. Option one on the slide here is optimizing that existing stage two. Uh, option two would be optimizing the entire landfill, existing footprint, and the current maximum permitted height. So no increase to the height at that site, no increase to footprint as well. And then options three through six are increasing or spreading out into some additional areas that are on the Lena Road property already. So I'll, I'll give you some more details on each of those in the following slides. But just to, if I can show the next slide, please. Uh, just to show a, a projected in, impact from any of those options, you can see option one would add about three and a half years, option two, within the existing footprint, the existing maximum height, we could add upwards of 21 years to the life of, of Lena Road. If we try to expand upon the footprint that's there now, uh, we could add anywhere from about four years to 12, 12 and a half years uh, with those, those additional options. So next slide, more details on option one. So this is just looking at our current stage two no increase to permitted height, no increase to landfill um, uh, footprint. It just changes how we do our filling operations. So we have a, maybe a slightly steeper slope on the sides, and we have to manage our stormwater accordingly uh, to, to make sure that we can optimize that available airspace. Option two is very much similar to, to option one, but we go back to stages one and three that are closed. So one of the other benefits that we could potentially uh, obtain from this option, in addition to 21 more years of capacity, is when we look at, uh, at the stages one and three, there's a lot of fill material that was put in place to make sure that we have the proper level. So as that solid waste uh, settles, we need to bring additional fill. If we open these cells back up and maximize the available airspace, we can take that fill out and use it for other purposes. Now, it doesn't sound like a lot 
that how much value could there be in soil. But we've crunched some numbers and the available soil that we could take from stages one and three has about a value of about two and a half million dollars. So that can help to offset some of the costs of uh, any sort of expansion at Lena Road. And then <coughs> options three, I'm not gonna spend too much time on the details for these unless there are, are questions. Uh, but if we, <coughs> there's, there's different ways that we can potentially expand the, the footprint. Uh, some of it would be a standalone cell and others would tie into the existing cell. So it gets into some of the, <coughs> the engineering and the challenges. Uh, and then permitting for that is gonna be the, the biggest challenge. Um, option six, if we can jump to that, that's our, our maximum uh, lifespan that we could do at Lena Road with a combination of option two plus option six, we would be looking at it potentially somewhere in the order of magnitude of 30 extra years. Because as, as projections go out, we get fewer and fewer extra years. So if you do two plus six, it's not just the two years added together because the future years have a higher projected uh, waste volume. All right, Other this questions? is, oh, you're, you're a smart guy, so I'll be hired you, stuff like this. Um, Commissioner Cruz, I mean, seriously, it's this we, is good news. Uh, Commissioner Cruz. Sir. Yeah, we, we had a long talk about this on, on my brief. I, I honestly don't know why the rest of the options are, are here. Uh, you can go through them and, and explain them, but I, we had this conversation. Like, th this seems like a no-brainer. Like, not only is is it substantially cheaper for a massive amount of additional time, and any way you crunch those numbers, the, the, the per year benefit of doing something like this is incredible. And you're, you're not talking about doubling the footprint of a landfill. You're not talking about encroaching on houses. You're really talking like a nine to 10 foot height difference on something that's already well over 100 feet. So it, it's not even noticeable any place and a, a slight change in slope. You wouldn't even really notice a meaningful visible change in this landfill. And you're talking an additional two to three decades worth of utilization for, and, and the cost not only was so cheap, but then you had the fill, which nets it, but also we voted to start a procurement on looking at the methane gas collection. And the longer we can use this landfill, the more we can monetize that and generate revenue on a revenue stream from that, which makes it that much more attractive. Everyone, our, our brief discussion without having actually run numbers, it, it appeared to us, this is almost free to do it this way once you factor in the revenue, if not maybe even profitable to do this. Like I was like, why are we even having the rest of these conversations? It, it makes absolutely no sense. We're sitting on a, a reserve of 35, $40 million right now for, for the, the future of the landfill, which now can either be reassigned or really pushed back for decades. I mean, I'm not saying just dump it, but you're, you're talking about a meaningful, meaningful length of time for potentially not only no money, but possibly a profit generating scenario. I, I don't know why we were having the rest of the discussions, honestly. You did an amazing job of coming up with a very unique out of the box approach to fixing a problem that's been plaguing this board for years and years as we stressed over locations and plans and future. I, to, to me, this when we had this discussion for, for quite some time the other day, it just it sounded like great. And I, I was really happy that you were able to come up with such a, a unique solution uh, not only for this board to discuss, but for the benefit of everybody here in Manatee County. And, and thank you, uh, but I do wanna redirect some of the, the praise for finding these concepts to our, our staff out at the landfill. Uh, this is not something I you that I the personally General come Utility up. Department you, staff as a whole, you're just the representative in front of me. Yes. Yeah, very, very, very well done. Um, Commissioner Ballard. So I, I agree with, with everything that, that Commissioner <laughs> Cruz said on this issue. I think we had a, a, a similar discussion, uh, but, but one thing that I wanted to add is that I do think that even as we expand the landfill, we still need to continue moving forward with siting for the new landfill because it, it, eventually the land is gonna just become so expensive and it, it would be such a huge expense to do all at once. I think that giving us the ability to kind of do it slowly and to explore these sites that we've already looked at, I think is just a really smart and proactive thing to do, even as we expand our capacity and extend the life of the current landfill. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner Cruz. Yeah, just a quick, uh, we had the same discussion about 
acquiring something in that 1100 to 1500 acre massive way out you know whether it's through something that that you know mosaic or somebody's using or just available site in general because we could always acquire it at, not that it's cheap today compared to what it would have been 10 years ago but it's certainly cheaper than what it'll be 10 20 30 years from now so acquiring that now sets future boards up and there's things we can do with it if it's if it's regular land we could turn it into a preserve for three decades so a whole generation can use it observe if it's a mosaic kind of thing and they're almost done with it we could we talked about you know like an alifia type you know turn it into a dirt bike, mountain bike kind of facility for the short term. I'm just saying it's usable land. It's not like we're just parking money for nothing. It could become a community benefit for decades before we ultimately convert it to, to a future landfill. But that's one less burden. That's one less thing we have to think about. Even though most of that reserve, I believe, was more towards the permitting and the, the closure of the existing one, correct? That, that's correct. Okay, yeah. so yeah. so that's, you know, hopefully the, the purchase for the long term at 10,000 an acre, whatever it works out to be, is substantially cheaper than that because that wasn't really the intent of that. Yeah, Yeah. well said. Um, any further discussion on landfill? Okay. Well done, Evan. Oh, here comes the lawyer. Just just when everyone was on the same page and in agreement. It won't be that bad, but there are a couple of points I do want to make, bad. which is... Um, you should have been a dentist with those first, predictions. Yeah. I don't know, attorney, dentist, you have to weigh them downsides there. Um, the, um, there was a lawsuit decades ago when the landfill was first cited where it is now mm -hmm. between a predecessor, I think, of SMR and the county. And that's why the landfill is so nice compared to a lot of other landfills. And so this is, I'm really glad to see this option, but I think it is important that everybody be cognizant that, that there was a settlement and there was an agreement between the county and SMR or its predecessor about how we're going to operate that landfill. And so we do have to make sure the external impacts do not increase. But it sounds like you've already addressed that, which is very good news. Yeah, we, we looked at the, the covenants, and I apologize that we, we did not have a conversation before Sorry. this meeting. Busy time. Yeah. Um, good. I'm glad to hear that you've reviewed that because it is important to comply with those. That could trigger some much bigger problems that could kind of make it more difficult for the board to, to look at this, what appears to be a very good solution. There are some bond covenants, um, particularly when it comes to taking waste out of the county. Hmm. There is a bond covenant that may prohibit that. It could, we could, through the issuance of bonds, do what's called springing amendments, where we amend that bond covenant. But if we're going to do that, we need to do that like 10 or 15 years ahead of time because it, you have to sell enough bonds to where there's 51% of the bondholders have consented to that amendment before it applies. So it's something that we'd have to get with bond council and program way ahead of time if that's something that the county does at some point want to look at. And that's all I had, Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir. Evan? Do you feel like you have good consensus on all this? I, I, I do, if, if there's okay. not a desire to go through the additional slides. No, sir. I, th I think you've shown us the obvious, you know, best options here. Very good. Yeah, no point in going through lesser options. All right. Do you have anything further for us today? Uh, nothing further for me. Okay. Then we're going to open this up to public comment. Is there anyone from the public who would like to come forward to address the board on any, any of the uh, items from today's workshop. Sir, please state your first and last name, your county of residence, and you have three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Gene Brown, Mayor, City of Bradenton. Um, Bradenton. So I just want to thank you to the, the council, the commission and the staff for doing a great job explaining that. Um, obviously, the City of Bradenton went through some changes with our recycling a couple years back, and the goal was to actually try to improve recycling, which we have done but it's more of a drop-off type instead of a, a curbside. So, but ultimately our goal is to go back to curbside, working with the county, and I know other municipalities have been involved in it at times, so we appreciate the, the county commission working with us. And environmentally, you can drive a lot of the city streets on certain days when we were doing curbside, and you'd see a waste pro truck or waste management truck recycling on the one side with the city of Braden truck right behind it recycling. So we actually had two trucks so environmentally, we're kind of defeating the purpose. Plus, unfortunately, as an educational tool, a lot of citizens were putting other things that weren't recyclable in there. So most of ours 
was going to the landfill ultimately at a great expense to us for cost. And we never did charge for recycling when we went through that, when we started it years ago with the curbside. So we appreciate you keeping us involved with it and trying to work it out because as we've all, I've heard today as the city of Braden with our council, all our administration, we are about recycling. It's not that we want it to eliminate it, we want it to keep it going. And if you look around the, especially the east part of the country, I made about 20 phone calls to different municipalities and a lot of them eliminated it because it just, they couldn't feasibly keep doing it. We in the city did not do that, but we're working forward and we appreciate your effort and having us involved in it. So thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. We appreciate you sitting through the whole workshop and, and taking it all in and Councilwoman Barnaby, I uh, appreciate you coming down as well. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward for public comment at this time? All right. Seeing no one, we're going to close public comment then. Um, is there anything else for the, the good of the order here, commissioners? All right. We're adjourned. <laughs>